we've got a question from Sue Harnan um, about, is there any advice on which of the LLMs, um, so ChatGPT, Gemini, et cetera, have best functionality um, for training for data extraction and risk of bias assessment? And there's a couple of responses from other people um, in the webinar, um, Pavel and Peter, um, talking about benchmarking and um, command R um, has been built specifically. But I don't know if, James, you have any other thoughts on that? Yeah, there's. it's difficult to train them to do this task. That's one of the things about these models. Um, we've done some fine tuning of open source models for particular, for different tasks and fine tuning models can be useful. Um, but the, the challenge often for data extraction is that the data extraction can often be quite review specific. And so where, where we've got to at the moment is, well, there are some things which can cut across different reviews and there are some lessons that we can learn from review to review. But at the moment, um, we're still stuck sort of thinking, okay, so we can we can develop and devise a way of developing and testing a way of using a language model to extract data for a particular review. And to some extent that will transfer. Um, but what we don't know from review to review and how we can test from review to review is whether we'll get the same performance even if we're looking for the same type of um, information. So it's it's a, it's less around the training of the model. It's around developing good prompts. But then it's around thinking about, well, OK, so if I've spent hours on this review um, developing these prompts, um, can I actually use them elsewhere or am I restricted to this one review? And it's it's the sort of thing where maybe um, li living reviews would benefit quite nicely from this, or at least it's an opportunity to have multiple rounds of testing as, as new papers arrive. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, um, there's some concern about your Hoover, James, and uh, yeah, people advising yeah. you to, to get out of Dodge. <laughs> 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 So, okay, more questions. Um, a question from Peter uh, Tamas. Hope I pronounced that okay. Um, what have you done with thinking about archiving slash reproduction? Does this impact use of APIs to cloud hosted cloud hosted services where we can't archive the model itself? That's so difficult. James again. <laughs> Yeah, it's really difficult. I think all we can do there is we can say which dates we ran it, what the model was, um, and there can be multiple models on different endpoints. Um, and even, you know, e even thinking about, okay, so I can archive my own model. Sometimes that um, has relatively little longevity in that uh, we're looking at what is sort of frequently changing uh, libraries and um multiple dependencies within those libraries on the GPU technology, which is changing very, very quickly. So you can regularly find that a model that you built one month, when when the libraries then get updated, it's actually really hard to actually run the thing anymore. And so there are all sorts of challenges at the moment in terms of replicability, not just from using the big commercial tools, but actually um, being able to replicate your own work um, without sort of freezing all of the hardware and everything, which of course is is too expensive to do. So it's a good question, but um, at the moment, I think we need to be clear about what we did and how we did it. Um, but actually being able to replicate it from one year to the next actually might not be possible at the moment. Thanks, James. Okay, there's a comment from Raju um, about credits to the tool used. And I think James, you've commented on that already. Um, some discussion about ethical issues. Um, any ethical issues that Cochrane should consider? Um, I don't know if anybody wants to make a comment, any further comment on, on that issue. I know we have talked about it in the presentation as well. I'm happy to, I, I think, I think, wait, it, sorry, <clears throat> I've got a slight um, catching my throat. Um, I think the the guidance that we that we'll be releasing this this first initial version of the guidance that we'll be releasing in the in a couple of months will will provide um, a lot of clarity. Um, I I I I don't want to 
discuss too much because we're still working on that draft but it will be something that will be publicly available so everyone will be able to, to see it and as um, I mentioned there's a web form I've put it popped a link in the chat so if anyone wants to see that draft guidance once it's released um, please do um, please do sign up and, and we'll be sure to sure to share it with you. Um, James did you have anything that you wanted to add specifically about what's going to be in the guidance? Um, I, th I think there are so many aspects to it. I mean, one is the way, for example, that potentially content from the web has been hoovered up and used to build these models without people's permission and the ethics of, of utilizing that. And then there is, there's a whole um, debate around the conditions and the payment of people who've worked on the reinforcement learning side of things where um you know the, there's whilst i call it a relatively small data set it's still been thousands of people and millions and millions of, of lines of sort of, of data in there um so there are there are all sorts of um difficult questions around that um difficult questions around the sort of almost like the submerging of the, the toxicity which sort of gives the face of a model which doesn't have bias but as soon as you start digging below the surface the bias is deeply encoded in the model so you know how how do you account for that and how do you make sure that um it doesn't affect your work but also should you be using a model like that anyway so it's very difficult because you've then got to balance on the other side the sort of like the the um not you know make it making best use of public money for reviews which are for public good so yeah they're balancing difficult and competing priorities thank you um a question from suhanan about separating about using uh, development and contamination sets from sorry development and validation sets from separate uh, reviews i think james has already answered that. Um, Peter asking about code. Thanks, James. Um, okay, Elodie, um, the presenters have mentioned the capabilities of AI for reviews on of RCTs and how do AI tools perform on qualitative studies? That's an interesting one. I think, James, you've already answered um, that, unless there's anything you wanted to add to that one. That one's an interesting one because um, tr conventionally the um, the received wisdom is usually that it's more difficult to use machine learning with qualitative research because the language is um, fuzzier. I guess there's less technical terms for the machine learning to sort of latch hold of. But um, the the language models themselves, because they're 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 larger and and can cope with um just sort of like the idea that multiple words and concepts might mean the same thing and likewise the same words might mean different things in different contexts uh, i don't think we can necessarily assume that qualitative research will will necessarily suffer from some kind of epistemic inequality in this case i think we've um it's it's actually a situation where sort of some of the the bias that we've had towards being able to use rcts more easily might be addressed a little but again, you know, that's speculation we have to see. Thank you. Um, comment from a uh, question from Nandi about which LLM was used, but I think that's been that's been answered. Um, Farhad has commented, um, have you tested Claude 3? Um, Perplexity has got several LLMs, including GPT and Claude. I think that's a suggestion for uh yeah, for Nandi. Okay, brilliant. Um Sorry, so um, uh, Yohei's commenting um, that they've conducted a study to investigate the accuracy of GPT-4 for title abstract screening, and it has good performance. And oh, thank you for sharing that. So, and you've shared links to that study. So that's um, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and James asked for a copy. Brilliant. Okay. Um, question from Oliver. Um, Will the Cochrane guidelines discuss all elements of the review process? So search string development, screen data extraction, et cetera. Yes, that's a question for Ella on that. Yeah, so there, I think one of the things we've discussed as part of the development of this guidance is that there, there might be different sort of accuracy standards to um, to aim towards at different stages um, of like depending on what the stages within the the reviews development, um, so we are we are considering that as part of the of developing the guidance. And the aim was to have some kind of, I guess, some um, some uh, yeah, some guidance on what 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 
for the different stages what what people should be aiming for okay that's great um i think we've got probably just time for one more quick question um from yang um how detailed should the transparency of, transparency of using the ai tool be um so gpt has provided not always the same results and they and they seem to be improving with time probably a, a question for james i think or or ella <laughs> I think in terms of um, the current editorial policy that we have where AI is permitted for um, for writing or developing the manuscript, um, at the moment we're asking authors to include in their acknowledgement section the statement around um, what tools were used and what content it was gen uh, what content it generated in terms of writing or preparing the manuscript. So I think um, you know, a brief overview of, of, of that information would be really helpful in, in the um, acknowledgements. Um, and if if Cochrane has any questions uh, about that, once once you've submitted to um, the central editorial service, um, then there may be questions of clarification. Um, but I think the transparency statement is key. Um, it is new. We, um, you know, it's a new policy. Um, I'm not sure we've seen a submission come through yet with this statement. Um, so we will be learning as we go um, in terms of kind of what what to include. Um, but the editorial policy provides more information and I, I'll pop a, um, a link to that in, in the chat. 